Welcome back, expert investors. I I I had to comment on this article because I, I I it's it's partly truth coming out, but it's spun in such a way that you know uh, creates conversation in 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 the wrong way, and it's it's kind of funny too. And, and let me tell you why. So we, we, you saw this on social media, and now you're seeing it in the newspaper. More than half of GTA condo investors are losing money on their properties. Now that's that's not a really accurate title. What they mean to say is that, and I'll read the first part here. I'll let you read the rest of the article if you want to. Last year marked the first time that more than half of investors in newly completed Greater Toronto, Greater Toronto area condos were losing money on their rental properties. And, uh, uh, and authors report that this reached conclusion to expect this trend to persist. Okay, uh, For the majority of investors, rent generated by newly completed units was lower than the mortgage costs, condo fees, and property taxes. Well, if you've been paying attention, uh, especially to our channel, and if you're a cash flow investor, you already know that condos don't cash flow. You don't need an article in May of 2023 to tell you that you cannot generate consistent cash flow from a pre-construction condo. We know this already. So for an article to come out and say that more than half are losing money month to month, That's already happening and it's already been happening for several years. And in fact, I would argue it's more than half. Now, if you take all the condos as a whole, yes, it could be less than half. I'm talking new condo purchases. Of anyone buying a condo in the last two, three, four, five years, the majority of those people are underwater month to month because of the prices and the way the, the rents have kind of been up and down and there's been volatility and the difficulty of uh, uh, changing over tenants when you want to increase your rents, okay? So that's not news. You know, what, what strikes me is that they never teach the, the right way to do it, or at least the right way from my perspective. And let me give you an example if you think I'm crazy. You know, we've been preaching cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow for so long that it's become second nature to us. So when stuff comes out like this, I'm like, where's the second part of this article that talks about cash flow investing? Yes, you can still do that in a high interest rate environment. Now, I'm not saying I hate condos. I have a pre-construction condo that's being built right now in Burlington. But the difference is I never, I did not buy it because I thought it was going to cash flow. Okay, I didn't even buy it because I thought I was going to make a ton of money. I, I know it's going to do well because it's a good project in a good area close to the GO train and all that kind of stuff. But I bought that because I wanted to have a secondary property close by to where I live in Oakville. Uh, because one day, uh, you know, I want to have a, an option where my daughter could move into one of these properties if, you know, if she needs to. That was really the main focus there. I wanted a secondary residential property close to us that I could rent and maintain that could at least maintain itself over the long period of time that was in a good location that my daughter could uh, have access to or live in if we needed to because she's never going to be able to afford a property i shouldn't say never uh, it's unlikely she'll be able to afford a property in this area in the next you know 10 to 15 years right you know we have others who have bought condos but they're being uh, when they're done, they'll be rented through uh, short-term rental. They'll generate tremendous income, so interest rates won't matter. So there are different ways of doing the condo investing, but the typical close your eyes and pick a unit in the sky, it's not sophisticated, and you have to wonder why this is happening. Now, let me show you an example. You know, it, For those who like condos, this is a property that I would encourage you to buy, not because it's pretty or it looks good or they have nice paint on the outside or they're a pretty red door or any or the location it's because it cash flows it cash flows okay and you can withstand a storm if interest rates come up interest rates go down doesn't matter you're still going to cash flow the only thing that's going to change is the amount of your cash flow maybe interest rates come up and you renew a new term and your interest rate your cash flow shrinks still cash flows. It still maintains its stuff. It still gives you extra money at the end of the month after expenses, after insurance, taxes, uh, uh, mortgage payments, all that kind of good stuff. Now, how does it cash flow? You know, you might be thinking I'm just picking some crazy property that uh, uh, is not real, but this is real. We're going to see it. Uh, this has a, a dwelling right here in the front. It's got an extension built in the back. Let me see if I can find the photo here. 
Uh, it's got a secondary dwelling built in the back on grade, and it's got an in-law suite in the basement. There are three units total in this property. Okay, essentially a triplex. So market rents for a property like this are going to be 5800 a month. That's 2400 in the main unit plus 1700 uh, in the lower unit plus 1700 in the secondary dwelling. Oops, shouldn't have done that. 2400. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry guys and gals. Plus 1700 plus 1700 gives you a total of $5,800 a month versus a condo that's going to be similarly priced is only going to generate uh, in a 900,000 range, probably about 4,000 to 4,200 a month. Okay. So there's the difference in cash flow. Even $4,500 a month is still going to make a difference. Now, okay. How do you know what's going to cash flow? Well, let me put in the purchase price. I'll put in the 20% down payment. I'll put two scenarios, one at 5%, one at five and a half percent, and look at the mortgage payments. Somewhere between 4,000 and 4,200. Okay. Add some property taxes, add some insurance, you know, add another thousand dollars to this in carrying costs, and you're still cash flowing five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars or more. Okay, that's the difference. Okay, that's the difference between cash flow investing and I'm buying this property because I think it's going to go up in price. Now, if you're interested in stuff like this and you want to buy cash flowing properties, even maybe you can't afford nine hundred thousand, maybe you're like in the five to six to seven hundred thousand range. We got you. We know where to go to get those type of properties. We can get you a property manager, all that kind of good stuff. If you're interested in that kind of property, leave us a comment, uh, shoot me a message. I'll leave my contact information in the, in the box here and we'll, we'll get on a call and I'll show you what that means. Uh, me and my team will, get, will, will put some examples together for you and actually show you what you can get in your price range that cash flows. So I hope this makes sense to you. Don't fall uh, prey to the headlines. Uh, be sophisticated. Work with experts. Work with Expert Investor Academy.